they're moving. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? music which we never know what it is but I'm Hillary I'm Davida and we're the two Pilates chicks and today is season four episode six yep yeah I got it <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about clients who are afraid of movement yes kinesiophobia yes <laughs> <laughs> speaking from someone who knows the word <laughs> so it's a lot to unload and, and we're going to try to like stick to our normal kind of time pattern. Mm -hmm. But we talked last episode about the fear of flexion. Yeah. And that kind of led us into this fear of movement in terms of the client being scared of movement, yeah. not the teacher being scared of right. movement, but the client being scared of it. So we had like a couple of instances, which I don't even know where we want to start because it's again, so much. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, um, we've got that client that's scared of. Well, let's just go with the first thing we talked about: pain or sensation. Yeah. Like, are they really in pain, or is it they just don't understand what working out feels like? Like activating yeah. muscles, working muscles, and not having that differentiation. Because you can have. So you have the client that's afraid of movement because they feel something they feel something and they think any sensation they think they feel is like oh I'm breaking myself yeah or I'm, bad. I'm getting injured or, yeah bad. <laughs> I'm getting hot I'm taking my sweatshirt off <laughs> <laughs> so you have the client that's like they just don't know the difference right between pain and sensation like okay right. I do hundreds like oh it hurts okay well where does it hurt and they point to their stomach. They're like, okay, well, you're working your abdominals. <laughs> so <laughs> that's gonna, you're gonna feel sensation there. They're feeling something. Yeah. Um, I had, I had um, a client way, way, way a long time ago. And she, we did a lot. She had, um, we were working a lot. She had had a double mastectomy. So she came back after and we were working a lot on her upper back and kind of strengthening and then opening and um, she came in the next session and said, well, whatever we did last time really hurt my back and I, was, I, I really felt it. And your first instinct as a teacher is to think, oh, lumbar, mm -hmm. like low back, something yeah. we did. And she pointed exactly where we've been working for the posture and for her opening up and, and all that. And I said, well, you know, and it was, as I delved in deeper to her in terms of what happened, basically I figured out, well, she just felt those muscles for the first mm. time. Yeah. But she literally did not want to do anything that she felt any kind of awareness. Yeah. And movement. So she felt like maybe the sore muscles was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. was pain to her. Right, and that's something like so pain is different for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Levels of pain. If you yep. ask somebody like, mm -hmm. okay, well, zero to ten, ten being a limb falling off, <laughs> zero floating on clouds, like what level of pain are you at right now? Everyone's gonna give a different answer. It's gonna be totally different for everybody, and so I mean, it's it's so subjective and that's what you have to deal with as a client is like how do you explain to that client did I say as a client no that's as a teacher, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> how do you explain to that client without minimizing yeah their gauging of pain or right. comp conception of it um, and get them to understand that that's work that you're just working yeah. that muscle and that's a good a good thing to feel and you're not hurting yourself. Right, and that's a really good point, like not minimizing their pain, yeah. right? Um, because there's a lot of research, like pain pain research is just unending. We're learning so much, so much. about all of it I've constantly. I've done so many workshops. So it's much, always, yeah. constantly it's different. Fascinating, um, actually. <laughs> really, really complicated and fascinating. And yeah. so a lot of the things started to say, like uh, pain is in the brain. 
And so, and exactly. and it's, it's true, but what they realized at a certain point was as they kept saying, you know, pains in the brain, all pains in the brain, you know, that, that it was making patients and clients feel like their pain wasn't real. Mm. And they're like, but so the, words weren't, the words weren't helpful yeah. for the, the patients in pain. And so if you're like, oh, well, you know, that's it's just, all in your head. It's basically all in your head. what it yeah, sounds like. That's exactly what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. So. And so what I tell my clients is I'm like, no, your pain is real. You are experiencing pain. It's real. Does that mean it's an injury or that you're in danger? No, mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Just because you're in pain doesn't mean it's hurting you. Bad. Yeah. yeah. And so that's the differentiation to help people realize your pain's real, your experience is real, but what you're experiencing might not be the danger signal that your brain is sending to you. Yeah. And that's a really good point. I have a client that just had knee surgery. She actually had a knee replacement and she is a month out, no, two months out, (laughs) two months out. And she came back super early. Mm. Because she'd done Pilates, we had prepared for this. Yeah. She um, all the prehab did all of it, and her doctor released her really quickly. Um, but as we all know, when we have surgery, things have moments of inflammation, things mm-hmm. swell up, and so it was one of her first days. Everything was fine, everything was dandy, and she moved her leg, and she got pain on this side where it was swollen. Yeah. She was like, "Oh, oh my god, oh my god!" And she got she really panicked mm. and I said it's okay that you can't you know this it's probably just the inflammation I was trying to like you know it's calm okay. her down a little bit mm-hmm. and um I said there's nothing you can do it's not gonna we're not gonna do any damage yeah and she didn't really believe me because <laughs> she right. called yeah she called her doctor and was like oh blah, blah. And he's like there's nothing you can do that's gonna hurt it yeah He's like, there's nothing. You... And then the minute he said that, all of a sudden she was like, oh, mm. okay. Yeah. So now when she has pain due to whatever, because, you know, there's still swelling, she'll, you know, get on her, whatever's happening. She knows, she'll actually say that like, well, I know I can't hurt myself. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you can't hurt yourself. You're okay. You're okay. But I think it's that like in the, like someone just saying, no, it's fine. Yeah. Like just being told that by a practitioner they trust, so her doctor, mm-hmm. you're okay right you're now. You're okay. And then often people will then actually, their pain will diminish, maybe not totally, but may, maybe a bit. Because they have more of an understanding. Because then they're like, oh, okay, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good. But yeah, I think that's important as a teacher to also not freak out when they go, oh, yeah. oh. like. If I'd been a newer teacher and she'd done that, I'd be like, oh, what's wrong? What, yeah, what happened? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. But I didn't. I was just like, it's okay. Yeah, no, we're okay. We're okay. And that's, yeah, not freaking out <laughs> in front of them. Because <laughs> then they're going to freak out more. But so you have the client who's just like afraid of sensation. Yeah. Oh, we were talking about like, so the pain versus sensation. So then we have the client like this person who had an injury, had some sort of a surgery. And now they're afraid of re-injuring or, yep. or making going back. it worse, going backwards. Um, and and then, feeling things they've not felt before. Yeah, as things heal or change, trying to strengthen around the injury. Yeah, these new sensations again. So nerves kind of coming back into play. Yeah, that's a big thing after surgery. Yeah. Like those nerves reconnect. Um, so again, that sensation versus pain discussion and like being able to talk to the client and hear what they're saying and and kind of delve into that a bit to to dissociate pain and sensation. To go back to what you were saying earlier, not to just dismiss yeah. their feelings. Right, because we're also not trying to be like, okay, it's okay, you're fine, keep you're going. You're fine, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, no, like, okay, that didn't, that didn't feel good for that moment, but mm-hmm. okay, it's okay, let's look at what was going on, like, you know, maybe it? position was funny or whatever. Yeah. Um, like maybe it's not the right thing for us to do right now, so we can try something else. Yeah, and I say that all the time. It's like, you know, let's, let's see how this feels today. Because mm-hmm. for her, coordination, which you think, well, what? But sometimes if the knee is swollen mm-hmm. and things are happening, deep flexion. that deep, and it's like, and then yeah. she gets all like, it's like, no, it's okay. Because it's like, well, I did it last week. It's like, it's slowly like today. Yeah, it's today. It's all yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you also have like those 
those clients that come to us who have been injured mm -hmm. and are in pain, like in pain due to yeah. an injury, or they have been in pain at some point. At some point, and now you're asking them to move again yeah. in a way that they fear. If I do that, I'm going to go back into pain. Yeah. So you have the chronic pain, mm -hmm. and then which is one thing, and then you have the old injury, and so maybe some lingering chronic pain yep. from that. And so all of a sudden this fear of movement for these two clients becomes a factor. Yeah, and so you have anxiety around movement and anxiety around how much pain you were in when you had that mm -hmm. injury, that whole anxiety and fear that then makes pain worse. worse. Um, which uh, literally anxiety and de depression and like emotions do affect our physical. What pain. I was gonna, yeah, because I was gonna say that too. When you're talking about like the doctor and all, all in your head, it's like if you think about pain, there's so much that goes in for that person that can be like embedded in their nervous system, embedded yeah. in their who they are, like it's a part of them. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like got them to where they are. It's like memories, right? They, they're, they're in you. Yeah, they're embodied memories. It's embodied memories, yeah. yeah. So you're you're having to work with that. Mm -hmm. And there's actually um, the, of pain research, they used to use the, the biological model where mm -hmm. it was just like issues in the tissues, right? Yeah. Like that, that was like the thing. <laughs> but now it's really the biopsychosocial model where it's like, okay, Yes, the issues in your tissues, so your old injuries, mm -hmm. old sports you used to play, sports you play now, blah, 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 all that history, injury history, but then your psychological uh, behavior, if somebody's more highly anxious in their personality, yep. their relationships with other people, uh, stress at work, stress with their family, like all these different things of all your entire life. In. Yeah, it all factors into how you experience pain and, and movement fear of it and the fear of it I have a, um, a client who's relatively new to me who was in a really bad car accident and so for a year was in surgeries and um, rehab and PT and then came to me and simply put movement of one arm and range of one arm and she had pain in kind of the in in, in the scapula area of mm -hmm. one arm um, and was scared of movement, period, in that area, to the point yeah. like even getting on the reformer and feeling the shoulder rest touch her shoulders mm -hmm. freaked her out. Yeah. And it was that she wasn't in pain anymore, but it was easy to go back into it at that point, and she didn't want anything that would chance that. Um, mm -hmm. But like you said, listening to the client and say and saying, okay, well that's fine. Let's let's go over here or we'll work here. Yeah. And so I slowly got her to trust the movement and what we were doing, and we stayed clear of what she didn't want to do. Yeah. And then one day she came in. She said, I feel really. I feel like today we can try this. And I was like, okay, let's yeah. let's try that today. So it's kind of like giving them that space to go, okay, it's okay if I don't do this. It's okay yeah. if I have this fear, but I can move in other ways. Right. And then when they feel safe, maybe they'll the thing. they'll come and go, okay, let's try this. It's not like you're gonna bombard them with it. No. But you let's just, just try this one thing. Yeah. See what happens. And that's, yeah, that building that safety experience in the studio mm -hmm. so like okay the shoulder blocks freaked her out because that sensation like in that area yeah. right that's so Didn't even sensitive pushed out. yeah so for her that's not the right thing to start with right and so starting her somewhere else so you're reintegrating like you were saying movement just to well, get it the took body like 10 moving. sessions before we got on right yeah so you're just getting the body moving again yeah and it's like so we, you know, even like the mat work, it's like there were certain ones that was like, mm, and it goes back to kind of sensation mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So, and she would say this, like, I don't know if this is like pain or I'm just working it. Right. And so letting her discover 
for herself, what the difference was for her yeah. was key too. Right, and like, so you're like guiding, like guiding her in relearning her body. Exactly. And that's a huge thing. I have a client that's similar. She didn't have a big accident, but she had long standing chronic pain. Oh yeah. A lot of low back stuff, bilateral low back, a lot of uh, back spasms, like very, very prone to getting muscular spasms. Yeah. And so in the past, she's had these huge back spasms before I knew her. And then she, it would just linger for days and she'd be in so much discomfort and she stands mm -hmm. for work. And so it was very debilitating. And so she came to me and she's like a newer client relatively uh, like a year or so now, six months. Yeah. And so I, my goal with her was to slowly integrate movement, just any kind of movement that was just gentle and slow where she could start to trust her body. Mm -hmm. She could start to trust that it could move. And yeah. I'm slowly like teaching her about the idea of pain um, and saying, okay, just because there's sensation doesn't mean it's bad. Let's start to learn how to separate those yes. ideas, you know, and just, just talking about it, right? And, and it's mentioning these exact things. But I think you, you're you good with what you just said about also giving that information about pain in those moments, like not preachy, mm -hmm. but just kind of sliding things in yeah, and out slipping it in. To, to let that kind of get and percolate yeah. into their mind and body. Exactly. Yeah. And so this person, like as she has trusted her body's ability more, trusted movement more, trusted me, gotten to know me, um, she now feels very safe in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so we now have added things in. And she even said the other day with footwork, I was keeping her at very low footwork springs just to allow the body to just move, right? Just push out, feel the pressure on the feet, let the knees flex, whatever. And the other day she said, I think I'm ready to try more weight. I think I can. And so I put her on classic weight and she can do it. And she feels strong doing it and she feels capable and so now she has this whole new like idea of what she's capable of doing mm -hmm. and what we can push and try and and these days when she does get a little bit of a back spasm when she does certain things at home she'll come into the studio and say okay i got a little bit of a spasm but i was breathing i was listening to what you tell me and i was telling myself it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> like hurting myself and it, it like slowly went away you know and so she's really developed uh confidence yeah. In her body and movement. And I think we, we talked about this is I think as teachers, what we need to do with like I we, we've talked about in the past, I don't remember where about the difference between a teacher and an instructor. Mm -hmm. And I think especially in this moment, we need to teach the client to be in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. We need yeah. to teach them that they have that steering wheel for themselves. Yeah. And we're just along for the ride to keep them safe. Yeah. Show them where to go. Yeah. but we're helping guide uh, but they're in control but they're in control and that's a huge thing for somebody who's afraid of movement or who's in pain finding a little bit of control that they huge. yeah huge I mean think about it because you feel it, it's like chaos right and it's like what what can I hold on to here yeah their bodies freaked out, the mm -hmm. central nervous system, the mind has all these you know, protective warning signs going off that may not be necessary, may not be true, you know? And so it's trying to calm everything down, they need to feel a bit of control. Yes. I mean, we all do yeah. <laughs> in life, but yeah. so especially if you're in a situation like that where you think, oh, th it, 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 the client's thinking, oh my God, things can go so wrong here and they're gonna yeah. tell me to do this and I'm gonna like be in pain. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, hey, no, here, you have the, you have the control mm -hmm. and you can take it where you wanna go. Yeah, it's like teaching those tools both in the studio mm -hmm. and then outside of the studio where I'm like, in particular for this person, like mm -hmm. teaching her how to do breath work or how to like, grounding or centering like certain things where when she does feel that spasm coming on she can she kind can of take control. control she takes control of it mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so it just it makes all the difference because like things that increase the experience of pain worrying about pain yes <laughs> and just 
plain and simple. It's like the whole thing we talked about with the, the brain and the negative and the no. It's like if you sit there and go, I'm going to hurt, I'm going to hurt, I'm going to hurt, I'm going to hurt. And yeah. then you're just tensing and tensing and tensing yeah. and tensing. It's creating. And you stop moving. And yeah, and avoidance behaviors, stopping moving, stopping stopping doing Pilates, stopping doing tennis or whatever the things are people like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Avoidance behaviors cr then create anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and then stiffen the body up and not doing movements that make the body tighten and then 